Brianna and Vincent don't know anything about each other, but they'll be getting married in less than two weeks. Brianna and Vincent, we believe, will balance each Hey guys, and welcome to Little Blair, but you know what time it is. Talking to you today, guys, about Married at First Sight. We're dealing with Brianna and, or Brie, for sure. We're dealing with Brie and dealing with Vincent, their relationship on Married at First Sight. Guys, we're going to talk about some real stuff. So if you're new to the channel, please do me a favor, like, share, subscribe. You can click on that bell button for notifications of the what up loads. And for those of you who are attorneys, well, you already know the model. You got the minerals, you got the minerals, you got the minerals. All right, cool. Let's get into the review. Okay, so watching obviously Brianna and Vincent kind of tell their stories, I kind of built up a little bit of a, a background and just kind of pinpointed some things that potentially could be an issue in the coming episode. So one of the first things that was said to us was that Brianna was slow to show affection. I've been told before that I was a a slow starter. I don't open up easily, especially when it would come to showing affection. The things that was shown was that Brie was slow to affection. And I think this is a very important point because when people are slow, not that they can't show affection or they struggle, they're slow. That's what she said. That means my movement shifting towards me showing you that affection outwardly isn't instantaneous and so with Brie um, I always try to break down why things happen so when someone is very slow to show this affection oftentimes it could be because they are they you know they might have a very um, strong image of the fact that when they show this affection too soon it could be weakness now if we look at the background of Brie she mentioned about the fact that in the past she had relationships where she had been invested in the guy looks and so maybe what she's seeing is um, maybe she's trying to learn from experience that you know after investing that emotion and that affection into these men making that mistake too early and then giving them a lot of herself what she may have found herself doing is that actually I'm not going to give that affection too early that's one thing to look at another thing could be obviously the fact that someone could have had a certain childhood and therefore they struggle with um, showing affection in what I would call uh, you know societally norms you know what I'm saying the hugging the kiss and everything a bit like how Karen was last season but oftentimes when we don't when we when we're slow to show these kind of affections there is an interference that has caused us to make us feel this way of course everybody moves at their own pace but she intentionally used the words slow meaning that at the normal pace that many people go she intentionally does not go at that speed which means a person is being very cautious about the movements they make in terms of affection do you understand? Um, but again, this, I guess, uh, again, again, this would relate oftentimes to a past event. So sometimes in childhood, when you are kind of starved of affection and stuff like that, it can be very difficult for you to begin to flow in that arena um, in terms of giving affection um, quickly because of your misgivings and mistrust due to what you've experienced in your childhood. If you've been starved emotionally um, and you've been starved of affection as a child, it can be far more difficult, especially if you're having to learn these traits and behaviors as you grow to give that affection to someone so when she said that i didn't feel it was like a red flag or anything it was just something to give us a bit of an understanding that okay so she's going to take a little bit of time and you have to play that off with who vincent is vincent grew up around his a relationship with my parents it's not as great as i wish it was my father he really was not there and, and it, it affected me i was a kid you know like and i wish my dad was around but mom and didn't have his father figure um heavily involved in his life now what does that do to somebody that can make somebody yearn for love um and obviously as well because you've grown up around women and you've seen how they move this can also cause a little bit of a turmoil in your mind if you're meeting a woman and she's not giving you the affection that you crave and desire and what you've seen ordinarily from women as they give up that affection especially if you've grown up with your mom you know oftentimes single mothers are very good um and they they take care of their children and they give them a lot of love and affection and so you may see that as a normal womanly trait 
And therefore, you may be expecting that from your partner who is very slow to do that. So if there's not if there's not a conversation early on, this could be problematic. This could be very a big issue because remember, if his father also hasn't been in the picture, that's rejection. That's abandonment. And when somebody's not giving you that affection that you think you um, should be getting from that person, what can happen is the person can feel rejected and abandoned by you. Therefore, making them want to pull away from you. This can also contribute towards an anxious attachment style where the person yearns for intimacy but flees from it so um you know this this is something that could cause some issue if it's not spoken about um if it's not uh discussed in the relationship um and as i said obviously because vincent has been you know grown up without a father figure i think that's a very big thing to talk about as well that you know not growing up with a father figure that feeling of rejection uh, and also as well how does he base where does he center his masculinity where does he get his idea of masculinity because he mentioned something he mentioned about finance he said obviously in being around just made me realize that i want to be like the complete opposite now i want to be that man that provides and and be the best dad be that super dad that kids run up to when when you get home in my household, I'm going to take care of the finances, I'm going to be a provider, etc, etc. And I've, I think I've said to you guys before, provision isn't simply money. You see, and then what, hap what can happen is men can really go down that end of, I'm a provider and I pay my bills and I'll pay for this, I'll pay for this. But they lack emotional in intimacy because what they thought was meant to be a husband was provision in the finance. But provision isn't solely finance. Provision of a husband is the care, is the attention. It is the uh, the way you handle affairs emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know what I'm saying, sexually. How do you handle these affairs? And in the art of masculinity, it's in the giving. So if the person hasn't fully understood the whole spectrum of being a man in terms of how we give onto our wives, it will look, someone can stay in the area of the classic stereotypical, I'm a man and I pay the bills. And since obviously some women are looking for that as well, it will look like your job is done. And then halfway through the relationship, you're realizing it's breaking down, why? Because there's a starvation of the other factors that come into play being a man or a husband ladies is more than him earning more money than you and also this is a very uh brunch onto that topic Bree mentioned the fact that she wanted a man to make more than her and remember I'm, I'm kind of trying to piece everything together to potentially form a story the fact that obviously she's slow to affection we didn't get much conversation on the impact of her parents on her family. We need. I wanted to see a bit more of that, right? But we didn't get to see that as such. So I wonder if the father figure, what his role was in her life. Because sometimes, like I said, when women also are looking for a, for a husband figure, they base that on their father. Now, if their father was, was there, you're going to base it on how he treated, right? And then you learn from that and you take information in from different sources. But if he wasn't there, then you have to also find your center of what masculinity looks like or what a husband looks like or what, what, a, what a boyfriend would look like because you, have, you didn't either learn on a job or you have to educate yourself through observations or, you know, you go to read books, read articles, watch films, whatever you want to call it. Some I have friends and I want my husband to be a go-getter. I would like my husband to make more than me think is going to inform you of what a man should be and oftentimes when i look when i do these 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 particular shows especially the american ones because obviously it's slightly different to the uk culture one of the most uh, the prominent features is men paying their way and i always say this to you guys like nothing wrong with that but is there a, is there a counter argument leisure to that now both of these parties earn very good money i mean they, they, they've got their stuff together right so what is the need for her to have a man who earns more than her maybe it's the image of what masculinity is to her maybe that that promotes leadership maybe for her that's where she's going to submit although we know uh later on in the show <laughs> when they spoke about submitting the give and take obviously like i want my husband to be a protector a provider but do i necessarily my girl was not really feeling it. You understand? My girl kind of shook her head like she's not going to be about it. Do you understand? So maybe she's not also into submission. And again, whether this will be a clash, not because she's not submissive, but due to the fact of what kind of man he is. If he's seen women and how they interact, how does he see them? Because this is going to be very important into how they go in to speak to one another in the terms of what roles they play. See, the wife role is different from the lover role. 
Let me make it very clear to you again. The wife role is different to the husband role. The husband and wife role are duty filled roles. Let me say that again for you. The wife and the husband are duty responsibility roles, meaning that we assign duty and responsibility to the title. Now, how that looks is dependent on how you to do it, but there are often what we call traditional sets of uh, traits or attributes we, uh, we, uh, we, we place <laughs> on those particular roles, okay? And so a wife not being submissive is not the traditional attribute we, at we attribute to the wife role and I, I keep going back to the fact that his father wasn't home so is he going to be okay with her being maybe a, a, a slightly more assertive due to the fact that obviously remember as well her job okay um she works as an engineer powerful um she's still quite young as well 28 i mean i'm only a year older um and you know she in, in, i think she works in construction within that as well so it's not just engineer she works within the construction engine that is a very male dominant arena which means more than likely you're going to pick up a lot of masculine energy whilst you're there. And if you don't know how to dump it before you get to the door, issues can occur. Let me say that again for you. If you don't know how to dump the energy that you have from work at the door, it can cause a lot of uh, um, <laughs> arguments between you and your partner. The reason why is because sometimes you think you're still at work at your home. So you treat your husband like you're an employee or a cohort, the way that you speak. And I always say this as well, when you're talking about masculine, feminine energy, the way that we speak is very important. She mentioned something which is very, very key. She said about how when, uh, if, there's a, <laughs> if she's cleaned the kitchen and she comes back and there's a plate there she's gonna be like so do you not want to wash that right uh, <laughs> right that's the little sarcasm kind of co uh, question right uh, and when i when i when i saw that i said oh i wonder that's gonna be an issue i wonder and then obviously her friend mentioned about the fact that she's stubborn as well and i said oh my god i don't want to change either oh once she goes up once she goes along that to be honest like i'm not judgmental I'm, I'm i'm not stubborn some days I live with you, sis. You like having your way. Dying. It's she's once she toes that line, she, she ain't changing, right? And the key question that was asked again, a lot of this stuff is set up for us. The key question that was asked by his friend, Vincent's friend, was that how are you gonna deal with a situation where the girl doesn't listen or the girl doesn't toe the line? She wants to do her own thing and it cut, right? And I think it cut because obviously they don't want to maybe they don't want to spoil it for us or whatever, whatever. But I think it's an indication of something that's gonna come later on in the show. OK, so for me, watching the two of them, I'm, I'm seeing that they've got some great qualities. I'm just point, pointing things that potentially become the hot points of arguments in the relationship. Right. Um because she mentioned something again about being happy, wanting the image. Uh, I, said, I said she wants to be happy about putting her feet up, coming home from work, putting her feet up. And, and what's really interesting is that that's very similar to males kind of imagery what i mean by that is the male imagery is that you come from work and you and you know you come back to your wife who's cooked a meal it's very similar although she's not cooking she's mentioned something that's just very similar like i'm outside all day working on like construction sites having on a hard hat and so when i come home i would love to have someone who i can be around Right. And, and again, I'm trying to get you to understand because these are the things are the way that we, we think and the line of thinking and how that can become the contention issue. She's got an image, which is fine. The image is, though, when she comes back from work, she can rest, put her feet up, you know, chill. He's also got an imagery as well when he not even from work, but when they can stay at home and chill, play cards and spades and stuff like that. And I'm saying I'm just thinking to myself, is this going to be an issue? Are they going to be an issue? I think they look great though together. I think they've got some great qualities. They're both uh, very ambitious and 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 strong in what they what they know about themselves. So I don't think that's going to be major issues. I just think there's going to be some contentious issues in as well. And it's something that she mentioned as well um, is that in the past she changed herself. And I think this is very key because if you've not learned from this, so if you're if you're if you're watching this. If you're if you're the type of person that has gone into relationships in the past and has to change themselves, let me break down some stuff to you as to why you do that. Now she mentioned the fact that she likes she liked in the past dating men who were attractive. You're not reserved. So how do you feel about, you know, him accepting you for who you are? He better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay so yeah, they were good looking people, yeah. So in in in, in that Oh, sorry. In that, like, she like dating these people that were good looking. Okay, 
one of the things that can happen is when you date very good looking people, uh, if you're not sturdy and solidified in yourself, what can happen is you can be decentered. And that decentered means insecurity can kick in. Remember, I'm also going on the fact that earlier on she mentioned about the fact that being slow to affection. Due to some of our attachment styles, when you meet somebody who is good looking and maybe they've got stuff going for them at the time in the season you met them, insecurity can set in and that can cause you to want to change on behalf of change for that person because what you want to do is be accepted okay and so the, the need for being accepted can make somebody change the way that they operate within a relationship and so you know what what can happen is that you end up ignoring your feelings um, you end up avoiding conflict um, because what you're trying to do is create this image of one, when you avoid conflict, you're trying to you're trying to stabilize a relationship. You don't want no issues. You don't want it to look bad to the outside world. Maybe you've had to defend that person to someone else. You know what I'm saying? Um, you ignore your feelings because what you're saying, hoping for is that as I ignore my feelings and serve you, okay, that will help that that will in return bring you to serve me. And oftentimes that doesn't happen. Vocality is needed in relationships. We need you to say what you feel. So when people are changing themselves in relationships, as you mentioned, changing herself within a relationship, the opposite that can happen is when you come out of a relationship and you haven't taken time to really learn about why you changed yourself, the opposite happens, which is that you become inflexible, which is what when a friend said, you always have to win. You like having your way? Sometimes. All the time. Okay, so people tell me no. And how did you react to that? Okay. I reacted. <laughs> you always have to get your way. That's the inflexibility. And so if that then goes into the relationship where there should be compromise, there's no compromise because it's like, it's only my way or the highway right and so that then can become an issue as well and, and the thing about changing yourself is that it's often rooted in childhood when when that child oftentimes has too much responsibility or is usually a caregiver before their time what can happen is their boundaries are eroded or their boundaries are never formed because what happens is before they can before they can get to a point of saying no they've been told their whole entire life you can't say no because you're the caregiver you're responsible for your younger siblings you're responsible for some in the household you, you have to play an adult in this household sometimes these things can impact the individual person i'm not saying this is her household i'm just kind of breaking some stuff down for you so sometimes what can happen is that the sense of self in terms of what you want is never promoted and therefore it's never grown and so when you get older and you start to realize these things then you start to realize i need to formulate boundaries but what can happen is you can go to opposite end of being a uh, opposite end of being a yes person to being an absolute no person everything goes no i want it this way i want it this way not that you're selfish you're learning and you don't know the line yet do you know what I'm saying? So that's something that I saw that potentially could be also an issue that can come up in a relationship as well. It made me realize that I want to be like the complete opposite. Now I want to be that man that provides and, and be the best dad, be that super dad. That the thing about as well is that Vincent mentioned about as well wanting to be the opposite of his father. And I think this is very key as well because I think within the construct of their relationship, um, I don't know her situation in terms of parents because we didn't really get to see that. Um, how does he, how, how is he going to play the masculine role, the male role within the relationship, the husband role within the relationship? And what kind of thing? Because I can see that sometimes when you know, when you haven't had that father figure, and even those who've got father figures and there's emotion, there's a craving of love, okay? And that craving of love, when it meets somebody who's slow to affection, like I said earlier on, yo, that can be trouble. Because what, and again, I'm going back to the fact about the abandonment part where you feel like someone's abandoning you, in that as well, when you feel like someone's abandoning you, you can then pull, right? And if these both of these people have not got secure, one of them hasn't got secure attachment style, the pulling away will make them pull away, and that make them pull away, make them pull away. And it just becomes a very toxic, you know, battleground for a lot of situations to go on. Um, you know, and, and also that, just to hit this point as well about the financial role, because obviously his father weren't there as well, I hope that he has more of a vision that, the provision isn't the end of my job. And then as I give, as I've provided financially, I expect you to come back. You know what I'm saying? Because what can happen is that a person can then put so much emphasis on providing financially and then they expect 
to get back from that woman a certain something. And when you don't get it back, then you're confused. We don't want that for you. You know what I'm saying? We don't. My last relationship ended because I wanted to start my own business because it's always been my dream. And she wasn't supportive. She wanted someone with a corporate job. Mentioned something about as well, wanting a partner to be thick and thin. So this has gone on to sort of about the, the abandonment issues as well. Um, that, you know, he wants someone who is going to be there for you thick and thin. His last relationship that ended, actually ended because, um, you know, the woman didn't want to stick with him through the times of, you know, starting his business. Can I just, can I just say this? It's not a problem. I don't, I don't, I don't think that woman's bad. In fact, I think that woman's right. Why? Because she's, she's, she's allowed to say, I don't see what you see, right? Because they're not married. So I don't see what you see. So she's right. If she wants to leave, she can leave. He too also has the right, you know, at the same time as well to say, Hey, do you know what? I appreciate the fact that you didn't do that. I got to let you go. You know what I'm saying? And he should do that if that's what she doesn't, if she doesn't believe in a dream, because that would save him heartache, right? So most importantly about the Vincent and the so when we're talking about obviously going through thick and thin um you know that you, you're allowed to exit the process I mean if if you feel like you don't see the dream coming to light ladies jump I've also you guys don't don't marry potential do you understand I know some people will say oh you know some people have become great yeah but at the end of the day listen at the time when I met you didn't have that potential like I had a similar situation so I know exactly what I'm talking about and my I didn't have no resentment towards a person because as far as I'm concerned I know where I'm going and whether that's with you or not that's your business I, I my whole thing is this if you stick with me for that point in time my loyalty is a1 but I also understand if you can't stick with me through that time whilst I'm shooting in a gym I understand it go your way I pray that you go and do I pray that you meet someone who's established and where you need to be let that be a blessing do you understand but for us men we can't be vexed if a woman wants to leave you in that period of time because you are not established at that point and it's scary to be in that place do you know what I'm saying? Um, so nobody wants to be dating a bum. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't make it, you don't make it. Um, and something that someone told me as well was that, you know, when you say, obviously, that you've got this plan, let me see the plan. <laughs> let me see the plan. Let me see that you've really thought this through. And sometimes I think some men maybe don't show that thought planning through. And there is no, there is, there's a lack of fruits in the process of the situation. You know what I mean? Like, let's say if you're doing six months of business and you just never saw anything come into fruition. Oh, but it's going to happen. I know, but right now I can't see. It's been six months. Do you know what I mean? So there's, and that becomes its own pressure for a man. The day I realized that it wasn't going to work out. I want to find someone that's willing to be there through the thick and thin. Just someone that is uh, willing to ride through the, the lows and the, and the highs. And you're having to do that anyway. So I would advise you men, if you're in a situation where, you know, this is happening to you, listen, if that woman wants to leave, let her leave. Don't worry about it, man. She wasn't meant to be part of the, the process anyway. Get going. Do you know what I'm saying? Get going. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, cause obviously that, that can end up being struggle love for a lot of women. So I understand that man, never be vexed about that. You understand? Unless you're married, don't be vexed about that. Um, so when he, when he said that it's very important again, cause remember I'm talking about abandonment and rejection and that feeling. So when that woman, when that woman left, I, you know, it can confirm that I, I, I'm not lovable. It can confirm that I'm not, I'm not wanted. I'm not desired. You know what I'm saying? What is it about me that causes someone to leave me? Right? Right? Because that's a very tender time when you're trying to grow your business, start your business, trying to be successful, not just for you, but for the fam. Yeah. Then you see that happening. That can be a very painful situation to be in. Um, and you could it can end up triggering. Sorry, it can end up triggering the past in terms of being re rejected or being left alone or being without a father. Right. And so that's what I'm saying to you It's very important. You know, they said about Bree is going to be a very good backer for him, etc., etc. Yeah, I want to. Uh, we need to. We need to see that not just from her end, but how is he going to react if it doesn't look like that? How would he react to that as well? So, that's a very important thing. So, I want to break down fear of abandonment. So, what can happen also in a fear of abandonment is that one partner can do too much, and they can people please. So this is the, this is the, when you can begin to do too much because you fear losing a person, so you're overdoing it. 
to stay in, right? Um, you can envy other people's relationships. There can be trust issues, feeling of insecurity in the relationship. There can be a lack of emotional intimacy. Um, you know, sometimes can this can also lead into wanting to control the other person so that you don't be abandoned. You know what I'm saying? This can lead into manipulation tactics. I'm not saying this is them. I'm just kind of breaking it down for you. Um, and also, it can also cause you guys to settle for less. What I would say about Vincent and Brie is that, like I said, the contentious issue for them really is going to be how they interpret masculine, feminine, their roles as husband and wife. That's going to be the major thing. I think I said this is very, I I said this very similar thing this was two seasons ago or three seasons ago when Will and Jasmine, I said the exact same thing. It's going to be how they're going to interpret it because that's going to cause the issue. Um, but I can definitely see that, you know, that, you know, she, th th these two have potential. Um, if they talk and they communicate, then it could be it could be something. Do you know what I mean? It could talking and communicate could be something. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Um, we'll do further reviews of Brie and Vincent. I know there's more that happened in the show, but I'll, I'll go deeper a little bit later in some other reviews. Guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe. You click on that bell button for notification of the uploads. We appreciate you stay locked and stay 